Welcome back, folks, to another session of Euclidean Geometry. What am I doing today? I am doing a rider. But now, if you look at this rider, it uses numbers. When I'm talking about numbers, I'm talking about the values of angles or a value of an angle being given. Now, solving riders, folks, make it a point that you know and understand all your theorems that we have done in Euclidean geometry because a rider would come up with more than one theorem in it for you to be able to solve it. Make it a point that you understand your theorems. Now, let's go through this one. It says, in the diagram, O is the center of the circle RMPS. Now, we've got the circle RMPS with O being said to be the center of this particular circle. Remember, there's a theorem that talks about the angle at center. It continues to say, T is the midpoint of Rm. Now, I'm going to point T there, which is said to be the midpoint of Rm. Let's mark those equal. If you look at OT. It is the line which is drawn from center now to the midpoint of the chord, meaning that it bisects that chord. Remember again, there's a theorem around this one. Hence, I said, very important to know and understand your theorems. Let's move on. And it is given that angle R is 50 degrees. Let's go there and put angle R, 50 degrees. What is it that we should do now? From this particular given information with the diagram there, we are supposed to answer those questions. Now, looking at these questions, this would be two marks, it would be two marks, it would be two marks, it would be two marks. Now, you go to this one, it is also two marks. Now, how many marks are we talking about? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten straight easy marks, folks. I like that. Now, they say to us, Calculate with raisins, very important, with raisins, the size of angle T1. They want that angle. The size of angle O2, we want to know the size of that angle. The size of angle S, there's angle S there. And the size of angle P1, there's angle P1 there. Now, next thing that we want to know is TOPM a cyclic quadrilateral? Is this quadrilateral TOPM a cyclic quadrilateral? We should be able to answer that and give a reason for our answer. Now, let's tackle the first one. Number 2.1a, what is the size of LT1? Now, I'm looking at the diagram together with my information. Remember they said OT bisects RM. Now, converse to the theorem that says a line drawn from center perpendicular to a chord by the chord. Its converse says, if a line is drawn from center bisecting the chord, 
meaning that dividing that chord into two equal parts, then this line is said to be perpendicular to the chord. I repeat this again. The converse to the theorem that says a line drawn from center perpendicular to the chord bisects the chord states that if a line is drawn from center bisecting the chord, that line is perpendicular to the chord. Now, what I know in this case is the fact that LT1, I'm sorry about that, my bad, LT1 is equal to 90 degrees. What is my reason? My reason is line from center bisecting the chord. Now, I have given the size of angle T1. I have also given the correct reason. I would get one mark for the statement and one mark for the reason. Now, we move on. What is the size of LO2? Again, let's go to the diagram. There's O2 there. Remember, O is the center of a circle. Now, remember the theorem that, say, that states that an arc of a circle subtending an angle at center and the angle at the circumference. The theorem goes as, as this. If an arc of a circle, there's your arc there, subtends the angle at center of the circle, that angle, this one, is twice the angle subtended by the very same arc at any point on the circumference of a circle. Now, that means that this angle is twice the size of that particular angle. Now, I'm going, I'm going to say here, angle O2 is equal to twice angle R. What is my reason? This is the angle at center which is said to be two times the angle at the circumference of a circle. Now, what does this tell me? It tells me that angle O2 is equal to 2 multiplied by 50, which is 100 degrees. We have answered the question again. It will be one mark for the size of that L and one mark for your correct reason again, folks. Now, let's go there and put the 100 so that when we are required to use this size again, we don't struggle and forget that it was 100. Let's move on. Now, I'm moving on to number C. Let's put it there. Number C says, what is the size of LS? Now, I'm looking for the size of LS. Am I going to struggle to find that? No. Look at LS. LS is subtended by arc PM. On the circumference of the circle, the very same arc is subtending angle O2 at the center of the circle. But there's another good one again. You look at this arc, it is subtending that angle on the circumference. It is also subtending that angle on the circumference. And for that matter, very importantly, on the same segment of the circle. Remember, PM divides the circle into two parts which are not equal. It is your minor segment and your major segment there. Now, I can happily say 
This any is half the size of that any. That would be angle at center being twice the angle on the circumference. Or I can say the size of this angle is exactly the same as the size of angle is. What is my reason? They are subtended by the same chord. Now, I'll just say NLS there is equal to NLR and each one of them is 50 degrees. What is my reason? They are on the same segment, very importantly, subtended by the same chord. Now, let's do the last one in number D. Oh, my word, I did not mark this one. One mark for the statement and one mark for the correct reason. What is the size of P1 now? Where is P1? P1 is right there. We want the size of that N. Folks, know your theorems, understand them. Do you see that O M is the line which is drawn from center to the circumference of the circle and O P from center to the circumference of the circle. What we know about these two lines is the fact that they are equal. Let's use two there because we already have got one. We don't want to confuse ourselves. Now, O P is exactly the same as OM. I'll start by saying that. Not L. Line segment OP is exactly the same as line segment OM. These are radis from the same point. Now I know that triangle OPM is an isosceles, meaning that the base angles are equal. Then I'll follow it up by saying angle P1 is exactly the same as angle OMP. Angle OMP. Why am I using this notation? Remember, I've got two angles which I'm making up. That big angle uh, M there. Now, what is my reason for this? My reason would be angles opposite equal sides. Please, don't do that in your exam, right? Equal. Okay? Now that we know that this is equal to that, and that is 100, we now know that, therefore, angle P1 would be equal to 40 degrees. What is the reason? Sum of angles of a triangle. Folks, let me go through this one again. OM, OP, sorry, is equal to OM. OP is equal to OM. These are radius from the same point. Now, Triangle OPM is an isosceles triangle, meaning that the base angles are equal in size. That angle is equal to that angle. Now, when I add angle O2 plus angle P1 plus angle M1 plus angle M2, I must get 180 degrees. Now, because this is 100, and these are equal, it means it would be 40 degrees, 40 degrees there. That is why NLP1 is equal to 40 degrees, and the reason is sum of angles of a triangle. I'll give you one mark there, give you one mark there. Okay? We have answered number 2.1. Now let's go to number 2.2. .2. Let us go there and put angle P1 size. That was 40 degrees. 
Now, that question says, is TOPN a cyclic quadrilateral? Is TOPN a cyclic quadrilateral? Now, to answer this, we need to remember the following. For it to be a cyclic quadrilateral, first of all, L's on the same segment must be equal. I'm looking at T-O-P-M. I don't see this one. Number two, for T-O-P-M to be a cyclic quadrilateral, this angle plus this angle must add up to 180 degrees. I'm looking at that one and looking at that one. It is 40 degrees, it is 90 degrees. Now, I'm going to use this one. Folks, remember there are three scenarios about cyclic quadrilateral. Ends on the same segment must be equal. Opposite angles must add up to 180. Or the exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is exactly the same as the interior opposite angle there. I could have also used the fact that angle T2 is also 90 degrees and it is not equal to angle P1. But in this case, I, I said I'm opting for this one. I'm going to say LP1 plus LT2. Sorry, it is T1 there. LP1 plus LT1. I am not gonna say they add up to 180 because I am proving that TOPM is a cyclic quad. Therefore, my argument is this angle plus this angle must be 180. They are not 180 before I show that. Now, I'm going to use this notation there, which does not mean equal to. It means that this implies, it implies that 40 degrees must be added to 90 degrees. I do that, I get 130 degrees. Now, can you see that angle P1 plus angle T1 does not add up to 180 degrees? Now, I'm going to say no. Remember, the question was, is TOPM a cyclic quad? No. TOPM is not concyclic. Concyclic means that it is not a cyclic quadrilateral. All its vertices are not on the circumference of a cyclic quadrilateral. Why? Remember, they said we should give the reason. The reason is the fact that angle P1 plus angle T1 are not adding up to 180 degrees. Now, for saying no, we get one mark plus that reason. For that, we get one mark. Here it would be statement and a reason no, and that particular reason. Folks, knowing your theorems in Euclidean geometry and solving the riders will help you a lot. Please go through your theorems, make it a point that you learn them by heart and most importantly, you understand them. When you get a rider, be able to spot them. 
Now spotting them, I'm talking about seeing that this is the angle at center, which is twice that angle. This is the angle at center, which is twice that angle. Those are angles on the same segment. I'm talking about line drawn from center bisecting the chord being perpendicular to a chord. I'm talking about your opposite angles of a quadrilateral. If they add up to 180 degrees, that means that that particular quadrilateral is concisely. I'm talking about your isosceles triangle, realizing that line drawn from center to the circumference from center to the circumference is equal to that. Make it a point that you go through your work before you write your exams. You must be mastering this. Thank you very much, folks. Tell your friends about this channel. Like it. Make it a point that you, you also drop us a comment so that we know where to improve or what to do for you. Remember, we are here for you. Peace.